Next JS 12 is out and it is out with a lot of interesting, new and awesome features which impact the performance, the speed of your apps and the functionality of your apps as well. In this video, I'll give you a complete breakdown of what's new, what's exciting and what you should be caring about if you're a React developer, if you're a Next.js developer or if you're somebody who's trying to get into this ecosystem. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. All right, so just to get everyone on the same page, this two minute section on this YouTube video would be a quick rundown of what Next.js is. If you know that already, you can skip that. But for those of you who don't know what Next.js is, is we pretty much took React on the server and we gave React superpowers. And that superpower mainly is server-side rendering, right? So you render the React document, which is your React component on the server itself in the HTML format and then send it to the client, right? So if you're a React developer, you know that you write in .js files and those bundles are shipped to the client. But that happens the other way in Next.js, not exactly the other way. The way is that React code runs on the server itself. It generates the HTML. The HTML then is served to the client. This client is then rehydrated to include all the event listeners and everything. So this is like a very short 30 second rundown of what Next.js overall does, but it does a lot more than that. It's a complete framework. So if you want to know about that, you can check out this video on why I'm not using React.js or whatever the title is. That should be linked. That goes deep into Next.js. But once now we have a little bit of idea about what Next.js is, let's move on to the latest release and why does it matter? All right, so the very first thing, which is probably the most important thing as well, is the Rust compiler. Now, this might not seem like a big thing or people might not realize what this is, but this is the very first step in the direction where TypeScript is actually compiled and checked eventually. This part is eventually in future, but this thing is here right now. So what we have effectively done, what Next.js has done in this release is they have used project known as SWC, which is a TypeScript compiler written in Rust. Now, why does this matter? Because right now the TypeScript compiler is written in JavaScript. So, I mean, that's fine, but this piece of technology, the TypeScript compiler, the TSC, is very slow on larger code bases, right? If you have worked with any project which is mid to large size, you would realize that it would take a lot of time to compile. Porting that to Rust and bringing the, those benefits to Next.js actually speeds up what Wurzel claims up to 17 times the compilation and the building phase of your project. So that's that's not a small number, right? This is 1.7, 17 times faster speed up. And this is right now just the compilation part. We haven't really done the type checking part yet where the real benefits would unlock because type checking is even more, you know, consuming, CPU bound and intensive compared to the compilation part. So this type checker is not implemented in Rust yet, but I mean, the SWC, founder, the creator of SWC actually works at Vercel. So I mean, it's just a matter of time where when they just invest enough into the engineering of this SWC compiler and type checker that we would have something like that in Rust as well, which would be, this would be like a really, really game changer. But in general, this Rust compiler and making it an official release is also a very big step in terms of using more Rust in the web ecosystem. As you can see, you have a faster build time, faster refresh in the, with the help of Rust compiler. So that is definitely useful. But right here, down here, you can see Vercel also claims it's up to 17 times faster than Babel which is like the default software which is used for bundling and compiling. For bundling, they're still using Webpack. They're not replacing it with anything, but that might also be done in future because SWC also comes in with a little bit of bundling functionalities. The second interesting thing which was released is the support of middlewares, which is also super interesting because now what you can do is if you have a route like user and anything here, or if you have a route like something like lawn or anything here, which we have on CodeDAM, before any sort of function or any sort of functionality runs in these pages, you can have a middleware which can be implemented as a rate limiter, as an auth provider, as anything. And then the actual server or actual response 
runs right and this part is also interesting which is like our third announcement so i'll not discuss a lot about this part but this middleware right here could be any sort of code logic which you want to be executed before anything in that area now you might think how is it different from just an api route well you see an api route like i said is called on its own dedicated endpoint so you, you will call an api and then something and that would most likely be done from your front end right this middleware is just like how middleware works really it sits between the request it needs you to complete the response inside of 1.5 second duration and then either send the response back from here or just you know let the behind the server behind the middleware server allow you to send the response so this is pretty awesome as you can see in this repo Vercel actually gives you a lot of examples of how you can implement middlewares and this is all built with Next.js so for example having feature flags or having geolocation country block if you want to block any sort of particular com country then you can see if I go to pages and middleware all you have to do is get the country for example in that middleware and if that is a blocked country block australia and you know whatever you want then you just respond directly to that otherwise right now they also respond directly but you could just pass it to the next thing right just next server to handle this particular url call now i want to talk more about middlewares but that would not be possible until we discuss what this server is and what this server in fact is as well so this server right here is a new type of server function which Vercel has introduced and that is edge function and this is not something in general which is new cloudflare has been doing it for ages cloudflare player calls it cloudflare workers if you have heard about that i have made a bunch of videos so Vercel has introduced their own version of cloudflare workers that is they are calling it as edge functions and what this edge function is doing is pretty much what cloudflare does execute them with no cold starts that means your functions would not have those you know 200 500 even one second sometime of latency because they are using it just like cloudflare does they were probably using this in a process where uh, you know like you execute a lot of browser processes and a browser tabs so inside of a v8 engine so they are doing it that way this obviously means there are implications that you cannot use TCP connections to databases or anything inside of middlewares you cannot use node.js file system so that is also not allowed you cannot use most of the libraries or implementations which might require some sort of socket working or anything so I'm assuming like DNS or anything that probably cannot be used as well but these are edge functions that means this middleware is running on the edge and if you think about it it makes a lot of sense why because this middleware is a function which probably might be running on every request right in a, in a certain page block so if you are on earth and if you're browsing a site and if that site is supposed to run a script in javascript on every single request you might as well just eliminate all the latency right so if you are here for example this middleware would run here on this if you are here it would run on this server that means when you deploy your Next.js application this middleware would be deployed on Vercel's edge infrastructure which essentially is AWS right because Vercel operates on AWS so AWS has you know we know that it's globally and it's, it has a very solid presence so you can rely on the same thing when using Vercel. Now this server right here, this server is interesting because remember this server or this lambda function as it used to be was something like you know if this is a middleware this could be a get server side props or maybe something like get static props or anything. So this function right here you probably and this is I'm, I'm talking a little bit in future but you probably would not even need to use these why because that brings us to our another point the fourth point and that is the support of react server components now i'm not gonna go deep into react server components in this video because that will take a long time i did a huge video on that where we deep dive into it take a look at code take a look at example a few months back so that video would be linked somewhere here or in the description so make sure you watch that but again a quick 30 second crash course of react server components is that you render part of your website on the server and send it stream it down as some sort of 
HTML response, right? Now this is very different from server-side rendering because inside server-side rendering, what you're doing is all or none. So you get all the HTML and then rest of the stuff is populated by JS, right? This is like a standard server-side rendering example. The React server components are different because you can still have a server-side rendering behavior right here, but you might have a part of the page which is missing, right? And this part right here is again rendered on the server itself, right? The component is rendered on the server, but it is streamed in a simple HTML like or, you know, some other encoding format. So you don't necessarily have to do a lot of calculation in JavaScript here. This is like a 30 second rundown of React Server components. If you don't understand it completely, that's good because this technology is something which is really interesting. So I want you to watch a complete video on that if you're serious, but you, if you do, if you're sufficient with this knowledge, then you're good to go. Now, what's happening here is that this middleware is probably running in front of an application which would render a page most likely let's assume a dynamic page so this function which would be called after the middleware should also be fast enough right otherwise what's the point so what you can do is the moment you opt into react server components is you can also enable something known as streaming response in React Server Components and in this whole architecture. So you can see right here, Versal says that concurrent features in React 18 will include the built-in support for server-side suspense and server-side rendering of streaming support, right? So once you opt in into this, you can see that it will now use the same strict runtime as middlewares. The strict runtime is basically that Cloudflare worker-like runtime where you don't have access to TCP and a lot of Node.js runtime functionalities, but it's still good enough to compute or perform HTTP queries. Then once you opt into server components, like I said, you would not really require get server-side props or get static props because with the help of suspense, you can include all of this data right in your markup without ever, ever leaving your markup as a source of growth. But the good thing about this is the moment you opt into React server components and enable the streaming support, these Lambda functions just sit beside the middlewares which you have, right? So if you have a middleware that will execute, then it will execute the next piece of function which is required. Now this function right here still might need to contact your database, right? Which again is a problem which Vercel has not solved officially yet. So a database might be sitting here, some sort of monolithic database and you just perform an HTTP request to this, get the response back, render it and send it to the client. But this route would still be faster because hey, you are using AWS's infrastructure here, right? You are using AWS internet, I don't know how many terabytes of bandwidth they have on, on single data center, but you are in good hands. That's, that's what I want to say. So now we have middlewares on the edge. Now we have the server side rendering things on the edge. The database part is left to figure out maybe in the next release, but this whole infrastructure means that this person right here who's browsing your website pretty much never leaves their request for the most part, if we ignore the database part, never really leaves the nearest neighbor or you know the nearest point of contact why because your response your server side rendered response might be cached as cdn uh, on a cdn you have your compute layer in terms of middlewares and suspense on the edge so that is amazing and once you figure out the database part because a lot of databases now are actually globally distributed and this and that but i'm not sure like how feasible that problem is to solve with you know strong consistency and global distribution especially in databases because that's a hard problem but the idea here is that for the most part if your request does not require a database if that is just a simple rendering these three things would make your website so damn fast that you would not be able to realize that how come compute heavy website like this is loading so, so, so quickly because everything now is happening on the edge from caching to computation to middlewares to data fetching, everything basically. And this means amazing experience for people who have fast internet connections, but even better experience for people who have slow connections because they would probably see a much larger difference compared to people who already are in a habit of, you know, just fast connections. Finally, we also have official support for ES modules. This means now Wurzel would allow your Next.js application to just pretty much import directly from a URL, like how you would have seen in Dino examples. But that is an official thing in JavaScript and web browser support of ES modules is also there. So ES module support is definitely coming and it just lists 
that has URL support as well. It just lists a few, a bunch of CDNs here as well, which would just work drag and drop, right? So this canvas confetti is one package, which we also use on CodeDAM, which just pops that canvas once you complete a lab or a video, right? So just import it from a URL and be done with it. No need to install it or do anything. And Next.js would automatically maintain a lock file for that as well. It has to, I mean. Then we have a couple of smaller changes, but this was pretty much, I guess, the gist of it. And you can see more about what we discussed about the edge functions right here, because, because technically speaking, edge functions is not a Next.js feature. It's a Vercel feature, right? Vercel is a cloud provider or Vercel is a SaaS product, right? So Next.js can opt into that and they have pretty much built it just like that. That will be very relevant for anyone who's using Next.js. But they say right here that it's, it's basically technology or framework agnostic. That means if not now, they would pretty much support more frameworks or more things and even more languages, you never know, on the edge as a runtime and here you can see all the examples of middlewares implemented in Next.js. so if you want to do some security api rate limiting basic auth this and that so we have talked a bunch about this but feel free to just deep dive into these examples as well if you want so yeah that's pretty much it for the latest next 12 release from Vercel. super excited to try this out on codedam.com we are still running next 11 because and probably we would be because we have like all sorts of babel configuration and webpack custom configurations it will be i'm assuming a mess to upgrade to next 12 but it should not be for the most projects if you're not doing anything hacky right so I will keep you updated on more findings when I use more of Next 12 and more of Next 12 features over the next one or two weeks. But that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new about Vercel and what is happening in the Next.js world. We also have a few interesting courses lined up. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. These courses include GraphQL. These courses include Next.js 12, something on web 3.0 as well. So make sure you're subscribed. This is the best time to be a subscriber of CodeDAM. That is all for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDAM's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.